Okay. Thank you for looking out for my hair. All right. <laughs> okay. I, I talk about, uh, Steve Arrington, he talked very highly about this experience, how influential it was on him, playing with your family. You know what, I think we were all young at that time, and I think the excitement of just playing music, it was just about music, that even though we were young, it didn't seem like we were young, it seemed like we grew up uh, in, a, in a place where everybody was doing the same thing, you know. He, he was in the band, he was playing drums, I mean, he was, even though he was a kid, I think, I felt like we were the same age and we were all doing the same thing. And it was an exciting time because music was different then. It was about bands. It was about everybody playing together. It wasn't a lot of like solo artists. It was bands. And that's what I grew up listening to were bands. It was, you know, drums, bass, guitar, percussion, horns, singers. You know, there were bands then, you know, and there's not a lot of bands anymore. I was going to get to that later, but listen. What do you think has happened? Is it just technology that it has changed how the music works? Or is there more? Well, I, it could be technology, absolutely. You know uh, that has changed music a little bit, of course. Um, especially when disco came out. You know, all the drummers they were calling me. Oh my God, aren't you scared? We're not gonna have a gig. I'm like, I, I no. We just incorporate the drum machine and we play. Find that space and then find where we can incorporate technology with what we do, live with, with uh, you know, drum machines. Uh, you know, you gotta figure it out. But I, I, it's not only that uh, technology had changed the industry, I think is just as much as um, a lot of the bands back in the day, there were like 10 plus people in the bands. I mean, look at George Clinton. That boy, Uncle George, now can't nobody do what he did, you know. And there are like 40 people on stage, you know, so you got to make some money to carry around 40 people. So I think it got to a point where some people couldn't afford to bring out these bands. And after a while, if they weren't selling records, it got to a point where you had to, you know, put five acts on one show in order to sell the tickets. So, you know, the economy changed. It, a lot had to do with it, you know. Um, you played uh, also because you're Latin jazz and that you, were, you saw the whole fusion thing. Mm -hmm. Um, one of the things interesting, again, it's like Latin music went into jazz. And, I mean, it had been the Cuban thing, obviously. Mm -hmm. but it seemed like when you took Miles' band and when you took George Duke and all the people who came out of Miles' band, mm -hmm. Latin, Latin percussion was, became part of, of jazz in, in, in a way it hadn't before. Yeah, I mean, that's what was so cool. And me, myself, being able to play with all these guys at a, such a young age. I was really young. And to be able to play with Herbie, you know, and incorporate percussion and and he said you know sky's the limit whatever you want to bring I brought bottles put water in it played water bottles play whatever I could find it's just we were creating you know and and uh, you know there wasn't a thing where we said okay we have to just play this specific part in per as a percussion player to uh, match up with the drummer it was like experimenting you know same thing happened with George I mean George Duke um, playing with him as well um, you know, he asked me to be in the band, and I said, well, what do you want me to play? I mean, you know, these parts. He goes, no, you play whatever. You make it up as you go create. We're creating sound. We know what the song is, so you get involved and, you know, just play what, what feels right for you, you know? And to be a part of that, it's like, it feels like that's what it was supposed to be, you know? It was supposed to, jazz was supposed to have percussion, you know? Um, and again, finding that space, what, what, uh, what had to happen at the time. The other thing that was really interesting was for Latin percussion players and uh, how traditional Latin percussioners played, they had to abide by the clave, which is something that a lot of people don't know. And it's instead of the funk being two and four, which one, two, three, four, you've got this clave, it's either uh, 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 or dun, dun, I mean, dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun. So it's two, three, or three, two. With with percussion players playing salsa music, they wanted to apply that clave to the funk. They wanted to apply clave to jazz, and it didn't always work. And so, us as percussion players, especially me growing up with my dad being a Latin jazz artist, you know, he said for me not to listen to the clave, that to ignore the clave and listen to the two and four. That's your that's your clave. Is that funk that that two and four? then play around that, that allowed me as a percussion player to be able to play with all kind of bands because 
I did a Latin feel, but it was based on the two and four and not the clave. When I applied the clave to it, it changed the rhythm and it really didn't fit. And I had to figure out, well, this is a traditional beat that a conga player would play, but it doesn't apply to this funk. So I got to now make up things that, you know, you just kind of make up parts that fits that, that spot. And it, it really,